There are so many different AI models available these days and being able to play with each of them can be really exciting, but there can be a number of blockers that make it difficult to get started. For example, here I wanted Claude to read a fairly long JSON and write some code for it, but I've hit a limit of the amount of tokens this would require to use without upgrading to a paid plan. And this is the same for other models like Gemini and ChatGPT. So what can you do to get around this? Well, I recently learned that there's this wonderful tool here called Olama that allows you to then run a bunch of these models on your own machine. So assuming you've got a machine with fairly good performance, especially on the GPU and memory side, then you can run some of these models locally. And the other interesting thing is if I click on the Llama model, for example, so we go to Llama here, there's a bunch of different ones. So you can make sure it's something that will suit your system's requirements. And then this means you can run the model locally. So there's no cost involved because you're not relying on Claude or ChatGPT servers to process the request. As a result, you might also see some faster responses. So let's have a look at how we can get Low Llama installed and then we can start playing around with some of these different models. So earlier I downloaded the client by just going over to their website. Uh, they're also on GitHub, so you can see all of that in the readme too. Um, but yeah, you can just install it with a curl command or just download the executable. Now I've already done this, so I already have a Llama set up. So now all I need to do is if we go to models, We've got loads of different options here. Now, one of the biggest problems I find with AI models these days is what the overwhelming difference is between them. Because at the end of the day, they're all fairly similar, but some excel at certain things over the others. But it, it can be difficult to quantify what that means. So let's have a look at what's available and then we can have a little play with some of the models. So we've got Gemma 3 here, which is one of Google's new gem models for Gemini. And we can download this and use this locally without having to use a Gemini on the web. Now, if we wanted to use Gemma 3, we could use the Google AI Studio where it's available here, but there can be some costs associated with this. So this is where running it locally gives us a few advantages. There's also DeepSeek R1, which is a really popular model at the moment. And there's a bunch of different varieties so you can get some that are different sizes and have different context windows. Another one I've been playing around with a little bit recently is Meta's new Llama 4 that only came out in April. Now, while I like Llama 4, it's massive. So instead, what we're gonna do is have a look at Gemma 3, which is only 3.3 gigabytes for the latest. So if I do a Llama run Gemma 3 colon latest, it will start to download our model and then we should be able to then jump in and start prompting it directly inside of our terminal. Not quite as pretty as some of these interfaces, but it allows us to get started with these models. Gemma 3 has now installed. So now we can ask it some questions. So I'm just gonna ask it a few simple questions and then we can start throwing some more complex ones at it. So I'm gonna ask it just what time zone is Sydney in? Very quick. No formatting because it is in the terminal, but you could see that if this was, you know, rendered in Markdown, we would get some of that. Next question I'm going to ask it is about getting fit and creating a workout fitness plan for me for the week. So let's see when I press enter, that immediately gets into the answer. I find that this is actually quite a bit quicker than running it uh, in just chat GPT and stuff. Sometimes I find it just feels like it takes forever. So this is really nice just how quick it is. Just allows you to have a bit more of a fluid conversation rather than to wait for the response to fully come out. So this is cool. Very, very cool. Now, the thing I have an issue with here is using the terminal isn't hugely user-friendly. So what can we do to allow us to use Olama, but to get all these cool models, but to run them in a more familiar chat interface like ChatGPT or Claude? Well, there's this tool called Open Web UI that advertises itself as the user-friendly self-hosted AI platform designed to operate entirely offline. And as you can see, it looks just like ChatGPT. So let's have a look at seeing how we can run this, connect this to Alama, and now effectively we've got our own self-hosted chatbot. 
So it's actually pretty straightforward to do. Uh, the way I was doing it was I was using Docker. And as you can see here, it even says, if you're using Alama on your computer, which I am, simply just copy this. It's going to be able to connect the two together and it's going to pull the image correctly from GitHub. So now if I go back to my terminal, if I exit that and now do Docker run on our uh, open web UI, Hopefully this won't take too long to pull and then we'll be able to connect the two together and now we can play with all these different models. Maybe some of them will be more preferred to programming, some of them will be more preferred to reasoning and other things like that. Uh, and now you've got the option without having to be hit by lots of different paywalls. Now obviously being able to access these without having to download them is probably the most convenient. But if you're just wanting to get stuck in with large language models, learn about them, get involved, because the best way to get involved is by playing around with them. This is a fantastic way to do that without having to incur huge costs. Okay, so now this is running. We should hopefully now have web UI running. So here I've gone to uh, my local address, colon 3000, and here I am at open web UI. So now, I can just ask, give it my name. I can give it my email address. And I can also give it a password like so. So now I'm in. This looks just like ChatGPT. We can see that it's actually using uh, Gemma 3 because I had that. And I the other day I was using Llama 3.2. So now I can ask it a bunch of questions. So I can ask it, for example, what we were trying to do in Claude, I can copy that over here. I can even get the file that I was trying to use and I can paste that in here. And now we can get the answers we're after fully locally without having to rely on any cloud providers now, which means that we aren't gonna be hit by the amount of tokens we need. I mean, don't get me wrong, the more tokens we need to use, the longer it will take to get us an answer. But now I can give it that JSON file I can ask it to look through the, the, the JSON and write some Python code. And we'll see how long it takes to write versus using something like Gemini or by using something like ChatGPT. So here, it hasn't quite worked like I expected. It hasn't read the, the JSON file in. Instead, it's asked us to basically paste it in, which is a bit odd. Um, but it has what looks like fairly straightforward code. Um, yeah, it's just taken a sample. So it hasn't done the loading logic, but I could ask it to follow up. Can you read the JSON file in instead of hard code it? Okay, it's misunderstanding what I meant. So I'm curious if I take this and now send this over to Google AI Studio to see if there's a difference despite using the same model. Now, interestingly enough, it hasn't actually read the file correctly. If I just bring this in here, it starts with results. You can't really see that, but you'll notice that here, it starts with attempts. It thinks that attempts is the first item. So it's not actually gonna work if I was to run this. So. Interesting, I'm gonna take that same prompt. I'm going to now try an AI studio. So let's just see if I can upload that. So it's running a lot faster than what we saw using it locally, which maybe makes sense for some models. But as you can see, uh, I am, you know, this will cost money to run versus running it locally. And it is actually taking a fair while to actually generate the code. Whereas we did get the code that we had in Llama a lot quicker. Now, the other interesting thing about Open Web UI is I can now use two different models to do the same thing. So if you are wanting to experiment with these models, you can sort of put them head to head to see which one produces the better results. So I've just asked it a kind of weird, can you save the result as a CSV file? Just to, you know, nothing too crazy. I mean, the result isn't really that much, but I just want to see if it can do it and to see what it will produce because I haven't given it huge amounts of context. As you can see here, AI Studio is still going despite the fact that it did not take that long to run it locally on our own machine. Okay, so we've got results now from Llama 2. Now, Llama was an older model, so understandable that it may be a little bit slower, but interesting to see that it's produced fairly similar results. Let's have a look at the code fairly similar. Both of them have not actually read the JSON file, so they're going to actually not quite work at first attempt, but interesting to see it will work under action. Okay, 
Very cool. If I want to add more models, I can do that too. So now if I go to models, let's have a look. I, Deep Seek R1 is one that I've wanted to play around with for a while. I can then do Deep Seek R1, and then I can just put the latest tag at the end. So now I can add another model in, and it's just gonna pull it straight and put it there. As you can see, it's gonna take a little bit of time, about five minutes. So we'll come back in five minutes once it's downloaded, and we'll have a look to see what we can do with that. DeepSeek R1 has downloaded. So now if we go back to Open Web UI, in theory, if I give the page a refresh, yeah, there we go. So now I'm gonna open a new chat. I'm gonna actually remove the model and we're gonna just ask uh, DeepSeek R1, uh, well, we could just do the suggestion uh, such as tell me a fun fact about the Roman Empire because why not? As you can see, just had to download it. it immediately comes up as a model I can switch to. This is probably the biggest model that I have installed. Yeah, probably the largest. So I guess we can, uh, yeah, and you can obviously specify a different ones. So yeah, I'm curious to see how one, how long this takes to think and two, to understand if it's any good. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think you're gonna use large language models locally or do you think you're gonna continue using these online services like Claude and ChatGPT? Now, obviously not all models are available on uh, the Olama website. For example, there are none of the open AI models and I don't think any of the Claude ones are on here, but there are quite a few to help you find stuff. So I think it's a pretty good place to get started, especially where there's so many new models coming out. It can be overwhelming to know where to download them, how to run them, how to even make it feel usable. So let's say you've got a computer at home with a GPU that you don't really use. This is a fantastic, thing you can run on that so that you can play around with AI. Now, it thought for a minute and we've got loads of, uh, got us a pretty interesting response. It's told us all about uh, the numerical system using Roman numerals. Very interesting. Well, hopefully that's given you a glimpse into how you can run large language models locally on your own machine and how you can install various different models, including putting them head to head. Let me know if you wanna see future videos with large language models and how we can automate them further with Kestra as well.